We're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our live webinar with the Office of Accessibility and Disability Resources at APU. And we're really glad that you've joined us today. We are, we are waiting for other students to join. Um, and we are really excited about today's event. We hope that we can answer all of your questions and address any concerns and really kind of use this time as a, as a time to problem solve together. Um, we're gonna, we're, all of my staff is here. We're excited for the new year. We know it's a little bit different than what we all expected. Um, we're all really hoping to come back onto campus, um, but we will see you soon. And so we will keep our fingers crossed for next semester. Um, Kaylin has some slides that she wanted to show. Kaylin, do you want to put those up now? Yes. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put up some slides with our names so you know who we are, um, and then Kayla will also be showing you um, a slide with some resource information. Um, we will get started in a probably in a, in about a minute or so, um, as we have more people participate um, in today's webinar. Um, so again, I'm Carmen Varela, I'm the director joining us today, um, and they'll do, um, people are, myself will be doing their, their introductions as well, is Ana Quiroz, she's our new coordinator, and we're really, um, we're really excited to have her here. Uh, many of you already know Kaylin, she's our accommodation specialist, and Patty Larson, who does our testing um, accommodations for the university. So we've all been working really hard over the summer, um, finding new ways to serve you better. Um, we're really looking forward to and excited about doing more webinars, doing more social media, and just finding ways to connect with you um, during this time where we're all just kind of sitting from our homes or wherever you might find yourself um, to, you know, to, to learn while you're in class or when you're off of class. So we are, we are excited to to figure that out together with you. Um, and we really are looking forward to having a great semester. And so again, just welcome to everybody um, who is coming in. Um, we are going to wait just a couple of minutes for more folks to roll in um, to start our question and answer session. Um, we know that everybody um, you know, was hoping to come back to on-campus um, classes um, and some of you will be, so I know that we'll be seeing some of you this semester, a few of you. Um, we've got a lot of graduate students um, that, that are also part of our department, so um, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you and to serving you in any way that we can. Um, ADR, the Office of, of Accessibility and Disability Resources, will be online for the next semester. Um, the testing services, um, will very likely be open. We are waiting for final approval, um, which we'll have at the end of this week and we'll let you know. Um, and Patty Larson will also be talking a little bit more about that um, during our session. Um, so Kaylin, do you wanna share the resources video? Definitely. Or I'm sorry, resources slide. Yeah, so uh, here's a list of resources here. We'll show it again at the end of the presentation, but if you're here now, you can take a picture of it, take a screenshot, so you can save this information for resources to use during the semester. We will also be uh, placing these links in the chat box throughout the session. The, the one link that I would really like for students to look at is the first one, the Student Training Guide and Protocols for Remote Learning, which is at the very top end center. This is going to have some really important information for students who are coming on campus this semester who are living in the dorms. So please take a good look at that um, as, we, um, as we go along. And these slides will also be sent to you um, post-webinar. So I, I think we, we can go ahead and, and get started. Um, let, me, let me look at the time here really quickly. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna just go ahead and start. So, I'm just gonna do another quick welcome to the students. Um, again, we're really excited to have you this semester. I want to thank um, the staff at the Office of Accessibility and Disability Resources for all their hard work leading up to today, um, and all the work that we have um, coming in the in this fall semester and beyond. 
I also want to just acknowledge Dr. Bill Fiala, who is the Dean of Wellness and who is joining us here today. He is my boss and oversees the Office of ADR. Um, and I just want to thank him for his ongoing support of our office and our services to students and to his commitment to wellness um, generally for the entire campus community. Um, I want to remind folks about a couple of things. We will be sending a post webinar survey. Um, it's very brief. We ask that you fill it out and send it to us. It will help us help you better. We are recording this session and we'll be sending a link of the recording so that you can have access to it. And also during this session, um, we, have an otter, we have a transcript run by AI by the name of Otter. Um, so Anna is putting that or has put that in our chat box. You can click into it and you can see live, a live transcript of our session today. And so we're really excited to offer Otter to our students this semester of in, in person or human note takers um, during your classes. Um, so please take a look at it. If you're a student that uses a human note taker and thinks and, and believe that this might um, benefit you, please let us know. Send us an email at disabilityservices at apu.edu. So in, in starting our session today, you know, we put a lot of thought into our session and I, I just want to acknowledge the disproportionate effect that COVID-19 has had on people with disabilities all over the world. So we understand that it has not only affected people with physical and underlying health conditions, but as well, it's also affected people with mental health disabilities as well. And so we, we know we've all seen the, the or, or heard or read about guidelines from the CDC. Um, we know that that the CDC guidelines are just that, they're just guidelines, and we know that the effect of COVID-19 really kind of spans beyond what is written in paper and the effects um, socially, economically, and politically uh, for people with disabilities has been great. So we just want to acknowledge that um, and so that you know where we're coming from in terms of, in terms of our service delivery for all of our students on campus. Um, there's to be learned from people with disabilities um, during this extraordinary time of COVID-19. Um, as we all know, and, and we've heard university businesses, um, everybody pivoting, right, which has been the term of art that, that's been used to figure out how to, how to continue either with their businesses, with their classes, with whatever they're doing. And, and people with disabilities have been on a daily basis for really a lot to be learned. Um, these are extraordinary times and ADR service delivery, um, service delivery model is grounded in principles of justice. And we have a commitment of care to all of our students. So we wanna make sure that you have access, that you have the equal opportunity to participate in your education and that you're being cared for while you're at APU. Um, we are looking forward to some doing some creative problem solving together. Um, and uh, we, the, the purpose of this question and answer is, is so that we can find some solutions together. Um, and again, some resource things will be posted in the chat throughout um, that will be bookmarked. So I just want to start this off, start off a session with a, a moment of prayer um, that we can all, that, so that if we can all just take a minute and I'd like to lead us in prayer for today's session. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here together today. We thank you for all of the blessings and the gifts that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for all of our students and parents and anybody else who is joining us today. We ask that you give us the wisdom and the forethought to do some problem solving today to answer questions in the best way that we can. We know that these are extraordinary times and that you are with us in every moment of every day. We ask you, Lord, that you take care of our students, that you be with them, that you help on a daily basis, Lord, with their families, that you keep them safe, and that you help them during this coming Okay, so it looks like Carmen froze. So I'll finish up her prayer. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you keep our students safe in this coming season, that you be with us during this webinar, Lord, um, and that we would be good stewards of providing accommodations to students. Um, in your name we pray, amen. 
Okay, so um, Carmen was going to introduce herself and then Anna, but it um, looks like they are both um, working on some Wi-Fi issues. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself, and then if they're back, we'll have them introduce or we'll go to Patty. Um, so I'm Kaylin Morford. I am the Accommodation Specialist in the Office of Accessibility and Disability Resources. Um, basically what I do is I help students before they get accommodations. So I work with students in getting them all situated with getting their application sent in, getting documentation help for them, um, and then getting them to that place where they can meet with Carmen or Anna to get accommodations approved. And then once accommodations are approved, then I step back in and work with the students and making sure those accommodations happen. So if those are test taking accommodations, making sure Patty knows what the accommodations are, and then also making sure professors know what accommodations student have, students have in class, and then making sure residence life or dining services also knows that there's accommodations there. So it looks like Carmen and Anna are back. So I just introduced myself, Carmen, if you want to introduce yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylin. I'm not sure where you left off. I think you might have finished up the prayer for me, so I appreciate that. Yeah, she did. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so for all of you uh, who, who don't know me or haven't met me, my name is Carmen Varela, and I'm the Director of Accessibility and Disability Resources. Um, and I'd like to um, hand it over to Anna Kiros. Thank you, Carmen. My name is Anna Kiros, and I have brown eyes, brown hair, and I'm wearing a black shirt, and I'm the Accessibility and Dis Disability Resource Coordinator here at APU. Part of my AD, um, being part of the ADR team means meeting with students, reviewing their accommodations and their documents um, when they're requesting accommodations, and really just walking alongside their journey here and seeing what resources they need to be successful. Um, and my favorite part of my job is just that, being a part of your journey. So I'm excited to be here, and I'm gonna pass it along to Patty. Thanks, Anna. Um, hello, everyone. I am Patty Larson. Um, I have long, straight, black, brown hair, <laughs> and I have brown eyes, and I'm wearing a red and white shirt, and I'm here in my living room. <laughs> um, I work with uh, ADR as a testing coordinator uh, for all students with testing accommodations. Um, what I do is great because I love creating an environment where students can feel comfortable and thrive while taking their stressful exams. <laughs> um, and I also uh, create ADR's social media posts, so all the Instagram posts and all that. Well, uh, we're all very thankful to have this time with you all. Um, uh, I know some of you might have questions now. Um, we're going to be answering uh, some questions that we have already. We're going to answer those first. Um, then we can go ahead and get to uh, your questions after that. Um, and to start off our time, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, we do have a question for you all. So we have a poll um, that we wanted to uh, ask you a question. So it should be coming up soon. Um, and the question that we have for you is, how confident do you feel about your knowledge regarding ADR accommodations and services? Is the question up? I'm not sure if it is. So is it oh, I'm not sure if the question is coming up. So perhaps where oh, we there it is okay <laughs> all right so um, again it's how confident do you feel about your knowledge regarding ADR accommodations and services um, you can go ahead pick your answers there um, we understand that many of you are new students so you may not have a lot of knowledge and that's okay um, we also understand many of you were expecting to be on campus and you're just wondering how accommodations will look like in this uh, remote learning environment um, and this is why we're having this session we all we want you all to uh, feel confident in what we can provide for you. Okay, so we have those poll results up. It looks like 
most people on our webinar today feel either fairly confident or somewhat confident. Um, and then we have a few that are completely confident, slightly confident, and then some not at all. Um, so that is great to see how, what a variety we have on this webinar, but hopefully by the end, you'll be feeling a lot more confident. So thank you guys for letting us know. Um, so now we are gonna go into our pre-submitted questions. So we ask students to set in questions beforehand. So we will move into those questions. Um, so the first question that we got was, how do I request disability accommodations? Uh, Patty's gonna go ahead and put a link in the chat to everyone with our ADR student resource guide site. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, feel free to click it and bookmark it. Um, that has lots of information about the process for applying for accommodations, what our different accommodations are. Um, so basically it's a three-step process. The first step is you fill out a request for accommodations application. Um, that is just for our staff to get to know the student better, get to know what barriers that they may face, um, and then the second step is to provide our office with documentation. So that could be documentation from a doctor, a mental health professional, basically um, someone that knows the student well, knows that the sim what the symptoms are that they experience. And then once we have those first two items, we then schedule an intake meeting. That'll usually happen with Anna, sometimes with Carmen, and that's when the student will engage in a process of talking about what accommodations would look like for them in the upcoming semester. Um, and then we also had a question about where you can learn more about accommodations. So you can use our resource guide site, um, but Patty will also put a link um, for a site from the United States Department of Education. Um, that's another great resource to get an idea of what kind of accommodations are available to students in higher education. Um, so if you don't really have any idea of where to start or what to request, that's a good place to start and see what accommodations are available. And Kaylin, I just wanted to add um, that we understand that during these extraordinary times of COVID-19, it might be difficult to get a appointment with your medical provider or your mental health provider. So don't let that deter you from applying for services. You just need to let us know. And we can, in, in certain circumstances, provide provisional accommodations for students. Thanks, Thank Carmen. You. All right, for our next question. All right, so for, for the students approved for note-taking services, how would the program Otter work for lectures? Would the program email a complete transcript of the lecture or would the program allow students to record the whole lecture and would you be able to re-listen to past lectures? So as uh, Carmen said um, earlier um, in this webinar, so ADR is gonna be transitioning from human note takers to this Otter transcription software. So Otter, which is O-T-T-E-R, <laughs> Um, is an application that records and transcribes live conversation. So if you're attending your class lecture in person um, or via Zoom or Google Meet or any type of like video chat platform, you'll go to the Otter website or you can download Otter on your iPhone or your Android because there's an app there for it and you can just start recording. So what Otter is going to do is it's gonna start transcribing the lecture. You'll be able to uh, see the text of what your professor is saying and at the end of the lecture you can stop recording and Otter is going to save that note for you so you can actually go back to that note. So it won't be emailed to you, it's going to be in your Otter account. You can go back to that note, um, you can make notes, make highlights, um, anything you want to do in that note and it also is going to record the audio which is also pretty cool. Uh, so students with note-taking note -taking accommodations are able to receive an Otter license. There is a free uh, version of Otter, but it's limited to how many minutes you can record each month. So we do have licenses. So if you want, um, if you have note-taking accommodation, you can go ahead and request Otter and that site, uh, that uh, request form is up there on the chat. Um, and you can also learn more about Otter, Otter in the ADR student resource guide that we linked um, earlier in the webinar. It's gonna have a couple videos and um, some links of how students are using Otter. And for those of you who joined us a little late, um, there is a link to the Otter transcript as we're using it during this live session. 
All right, so I think the next question, I believe is mine. Um, so what outside resources are available to help me fund my education? So as you see um, in the chat box, there's a couple of links, one to the Department of Rehabilitation um, and one to Disability Rights California, which is a fact sheet on, on funding the, as the Department of Education, I'm sorry, the Department of Rehabilitation as a funding source for education uh, for students with disabilities. So the California Department of, of Rehabilitation, if you don't live in California and you're in another state, there is a Department of Rehabilitation. Sometimes they're called Vocational Rehabilitation Services or they, have, they, or they go by a different name, but there is one in every state in the US and they are tasked with ensuring um, that they remove barriers to employment for people with disabilities. And so what that means for college students is that in order for for you as a college student with a disability to move into employment, you will require educational training services, hence your education at APU or another institution of higher education. Um, the Department of Rehab can pay for your tuition. Um, in some instances, it can pay for your entire tuition. Um, it can get a little bit tricky for private institutions, but it is possible because I have seen that happen. Um, they can pay for your books, for your supplies, for your transportation costs, and in some cases they can also pay for your housing. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at our office and, and schedule an appointment with me or with Anna and we can definitely talk more about that. And also please look at the fact sheet from Disability Rights California because that will also answer a lot of your questions. Just please know that there is funding available and even if you're even if you're already getting funding either through federal financial aid or loans, the Department of Rehabilitation can help offset those costs. And in many circumstances, it would mean that you don't have to take out loans, which would then put you in debt um, after, your, after your college career at APU. Thanks. So our next question was, if my request for accommodations was accepted, but I am not coming back to campus, how do I ensure that I have it when I return to campus in the spring? So um, Patty's gonna put in the chat um, two form stack documents. So those are forms online that you can fill out. So one is the undergrad session request for accommodations form. And the second one is the session request for accommodations form for our graduate and professional students. So these uh, forms should be filled out by any student that is approved for accommodations that would like to utilize their accommodations in the upcoming semester. Prior to the start of each semester, you will get an email from our office with those, but I do recommend to students that have accommodations to bookmark those like on their webpage so that they're easy to access. So if you're taking the semester off, you don't need to fill that out and let us know who your professors are, where your accommodation memo needs to be sent to. But if you are coming back to campus and you have classes that you're enrolled in, you'll want to fill that out and let us know who your professors are so that we know who your accommodation memo should be sent to. And I also want to open up this time. If we have not answered a question that you have yet, there is a Q&A um, little box at the bottom of the Zoom. So you can go ahead and click on that and type in your questions there and we will go through those once we're done with our pre-submitted questions. All right, our next question has to do with testing. So it's asking, where would a student be able to sign up for testing and get their extended time they are allowed on their exams? If professors have trouble extending the time for students on campus, where can a student direct the professor so they're shown how to extend time on exams? Uh, right now, if you are taking an exam on, on Canvas, you do not need to schedule your exams to get your extended time. Right now, all you need to do is notify your professors that you do have extended time. I know professors will sometimes forget which uh, students have um, the extended time accommodation. So please let your professors know that you do have extended time and that you'll be able to use it on Canvas. So we, along with your academic um, accommodation memo, we do email your professors a Canvas tutorial so that it's a Google Doc that we've created that shows step-by-step -step instructions on how to extend time on Canvas. So your professors will be getting that emailed um, to them. Uh, but if you know, they don't have the link, you can always provide that link to your professors. We just um, put that in the chat right now. 
So that's uh, a Google Doc with the Canvas tutorials. You can go ahead and send that to your professors um, if they don't know how to extend the time. Um, for students that have uh, accommodations beyond extended time for exam, so if you're a student that's approved for a reader or a scribe, we do have the ability to uh, remotely proctor your exams through Zoom. And we use the screen share feature to read um, exams out loud. And we can also use the remote control access uh, feature on Zoom to scribe your exam. So we can do that for you. Um, and those exams do need to be scheduled. And to schedule those exams, all you need to do is email testing center at uh, testingcenter at apu.edu. Um, or you can email disability services and that's fine. It'll get forwarded to me. Um, and I'll reach out to you and we can set up a time to test out Zoom features um, and then we can get your exam scheduled. And then also, um, Carmen mentioned this earlier, today we found out we, um, that we might be getting uh, approved to open up the testing center uh, for in-person exams. Um, however, the need will be assessed on an individual basis, so please email disability services if that's something that you absolutely need. Thank you, Patty. The next question um, is, do I have to wait for the beginning of each semester to apply for accommodations? So the answer to that is no. You can actually apply at any point that you're in classes. Um, we encourage you to do it as soon as possible just because it is a, a process that you have to submit documentations and then also schedule intake that might take time to schedule. So it may take a few days to a couple weeks, depending on the circumstances. So always trying to be proactive is always key, um, but don't feel that um, if you didn't do it at the beginning of the semester, you have to wait until the end. And just keeping in mind also that accommodations are not retroactive, meaning that the day that you are approved for accommodations, then that's when they go into effect and onward. So they cannot be applied to any um, situations that, uh, or. Uh, exams or uh, assignments that have already passed. All right, thank you, Anna. So I'm gonna take the next question, which is, what do I do if my professor is not implementing my accommodation? So this is a great question. Um, I'm gonna say that for the most part at APU, we have not had um, a lot of concerns around the non-implementation of accommodations by faculty. When this does happen, we are going to advise that you speak to your faculty directly if you are comfortable, right? So we understand sometimes it's difficult um, to approach your professors, but we also wanna encourage you to communicate with them, to do some self-advocacy, to just remind them about your accommodations. You can resend them your accommodations memo since you get copied on the memo that gets sent to all of your professors. Um, sometimes it's an oversight uh, perhaps maybe the, the professor misunderstood an accommodation and we're happy to help clear that up. Um, but we definitely encourage you to, to communicate with your professor. Another thing I want to encourage all of our students to do is to utilize a very under, underutilized resource offered by our campus that's absolutely free, which is the, which is the hours, right? The faculty hours that they have. Um, it's in the syllabus. Um, schedule something, schedule a meeting with your professor, introduce yourself. Um, don't feel like you ever have to disclose the nature of your disability, even if your professor asks you, right? Uh, most faculty know, if not all, to not ask you that question. Um, but it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to, to introduce yourself to the professor. You can talk about what your needs are, and then you can talk about your accommodations during that time. And I'm gonna suggest that you meet with your professor during their office hours consistently throughout the semester just to help you check in to see, are you understanding your assignments correctly? How are you doing on your exams? What do your grades look like? Know that if your instructors know that you're invested in your education and in doing well, they'll also be invested in you as well. Um, if you, if you come across a professor or a situation where um, they're just not agreeing to implement your accommodations or you believe um, there's a greater concern happening or a problem happening, let us know right away. Um, email us at disabilityservices at apu.edu and either Anna or I will get back to you. We're happy to talk to professors, help problem solve, um, and we can do this fairly quickly. All right. Thank you, Carmen. 
I think I have the last question that was submitted, um, which is, I'm a disabled veteran. I'm not sure what procedure I need to follow in order to request special accommodations. I would like to know what documents I need to provide to your department to get the process started. So this is a great question. Um, we have a lot of uh, veterans that uh, reach out to our office and um, receive extra support from our office. Um, just like any other student, the first step would be to complete and submit a request for accommodations form. And alongside that, you would need documentation verifying your disability. Being a veteran, you would have options um, through your VA, through those documents. Um, on, on the chat, there is also going to be a link um, to the eBenefits website. Many veterans have uh, access to their documents through this website and those would be suffice. So sending um, screenshots, I've gotten screenshots as examples, um, or even you can download them and email them to our disability services email is also um, appropriate and would, uh, would meet the needs uh, for the documentation. And we also wanna share with you our APU Military and Veteran Services um, website and um, just making sure that you're connecting with them and making sure that you're receiving the, all the support that you need uh, while you're here at APU. Awesome. So we have some students who submitted questions. Again, if you still have questions that we have not answered, there's a Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen that you can use to ask us, ask us a question. Um, should we do our second poll now while students ask? Okay, great. So um, we have another poll for you guys that'll pop up on your screen. Um, the question is, what do you need to be successful in the fall 2020 semester? So we have several different options there. Academic coaching, which happens with our graduate assistants. We, um, there's tutoring on campus, connecting with other students. Do you need to know more about available campus resources? Do you need to increase your knowledge about accommodations from our office? Or maybe you need to know all of the above, or maybe something you need to know is completely different, none of the above. So if you guys can take a second and answer that, we will wait to see the results. And part of this question is us just wanting to know how we can come alongside you and support you. So we want to be able to know uh, what are the best ways and what you're needing, especially in this new remote environment that we're starting this fall. Okay, great. So it looks like we have the results. So it looks like most people on our webinar today said they need all of the above. So that is great for our office to know um, what you guys feel like you need to be supported. Um, and then our second highest answer was knowing more about available campus resources, which is great because we actually have um, a slide that we'll show at the end of our presentation that has a list of a bunch of different resources on campus that are available that um, are outside of our office that may be beneficial to you as well. So um, we have some live questions that I'll move in and answer um, with the rest of our panel. So the first question that we got was when will tutoring open back up? Um, I believe tutoring is open now. Patty, you work close with our tutoring center. Can you confirm that? Yeah, um, so tutoring Right now, they're still assessing the needs for tutoring right now and still um, hiring uh, tutors. So if you do need tutoring, please go ahead and email tutoring um, at apu.edu um, and then just specify your need for which subjects and then they'll go ahead and get back to you on that. But they should be open um, usually second week of classes. Thanks, Patty. I also just put a link to the tutoring website in the chat box. So if you want to take a look at the tutoring website on how to make an appointment, um, the link is there. Can, um, can I also add to that that the Writing Center will also be available if you're needing tutoring for writing and that it'll be, um, you'll be able to make appointments online for that. So it'll be available remotely as well. And we'll, I just want to add some um, something as well. So we're going to be working with the Writing Center um, at the end of the month to be doing a training on how to best work with students with disabilities. And so we're really looking forward to also working with our tutoring center, our communication center, and other campus partners um, to help them help you better. Thanks. 
And then there was a follow-up question about tutoring. So it says, how does tutoring work? Will it be online? Does the Disability Center off offer tutoring? Um, so for that, you can look on their website. Um, tutoring will be online, um, as most of us, most of the rest of the campus, we will be online as well. Um, our office, we do not have tutoring through our office. Um, however, we do have academic coaching that our graduate assistants take on during the semester. So um, basically what that looks like is meeting with one of our graduate students and then um, it's basically more focused on um, study tips, how to take effective notes. Um, it's a really great resource for students that um, need the extra support in just managing college level classes, things like that. Um, but it's not like tutoring in the sense of it's a specific to a subject. Carmen, is there anything that you wanted to add about academic coaching? Yes, thanks, Kaylin. So, so our academic coaches focus on organization, right? Help students get organized, schedule, make sure that your exams are scheduled, that your assignment deadlines are scheduled, that you're working backwards and ensuring that you're setting benchmarks for yourself throughout the semester that you can meet so that you can um, so that you can accomplish your goals, right? Your your classwork, studying, and your exams. Um, they also focus on communication. Um, so they will help you figure out different ways to communicate with your peers, with your study groups, with your professor, because communication is key, is it's, it's key to success, right? Whether it's academic success, success at work, um, success in a relationship. So I think communication is really important. Um, and then it also focuses on self-advocacy, right? And helping you figure out ways to kind of find your voice and to be able to let your professors know what your needs are. Maybe the folks in your study group, the other students in your study group. Um, and so we're gonna be doing um, some training with our grad assistants. And I think um, at least one of them is joining us today. Um, and we're really excited to have them on board. And they will be doing um, sessions via Zoom and on the phone. And it's really about what works for you. Um, they'll be de developing personal, uh, personal responsibility plans to help keep you accountable in, in accomplishing your goals. Thanks. Thanks, Carmen. Um, so the next question we have, um, Patty, since you talked about Otter earlier, I'll let you answer it. Mm -hmm. uh, so to use a licensed uh, account with Otter through APU, we have to submit an ADR request for accommodations, question mark. To get the Otter license, you do have to have a note-taking accommodation. Um, so you do have to be approved uh, for note-taking. And if you, if you need to be approved for note-taking accommodations, then just email disabilityservices at apu.edu and um, we can set up an appointment with you. And you can talk about how um, a note-taking accommodation will, will help you uh, during your lectures. Um, so from there, you can uh, fill out the auto request form, and then from there, that's where you get the license. Perfect, thanks, Patty. Um, and then we had a couple questions. I'll ask you, Anna, about um, education benefits for veterans. Um, so one question asks, veterans receiving education benefits from the VA can, also, can they also apply for the California Rehabilitation Benefits? So they definitely can. Um, I actually uh, have a link through our California State Department of Rehabilitation that actually answers this with a um, question of what makes me eligible. And I'll put it here on the link. And I definitely encourage you to reach out to them and see what you would be eligible for. There's different ways. Tuition is one of the eligibilities that uh, benefits that you can be eligible for. Uh, also costs for books, um, or if there's extra um, technology that you might need, those are some of the things that they might offer that uh, you might qualify for. Um, I just wanna add that what'll happen is if you have a service-related in injury through the, um, because of your service and you qualify for, um, for vocational services through the VA and, and apply and are eligible for services through the Department of Rehabilitation, the Department of Rehabilitation will first ask you to utilize your services through the VA and whatever they cannot provide for you through the VA, they will then provide for you. So they kind of fill in the gap for veterans 
um, what they won't do is do is is duplicate services or funding for services. Um, so just just know that that's possible. If you have any questions, just um, send us an email. We'll be happy to help you. Great, thanks. So um, this question was about the Department of Rehabilitation. So um, Anna or Carmen, um, but this says, would you know? Would you happen to know if the Department of Rehabilitation accepted you before? Will they accept you again, especially if you're in grad school? So I, I can answer that question. Um, so they can. So it just really depends on what on what it is that you're looking for. For example, um, sometimes the Department of Rehabilitation, you'll you'll be a client, and then let's say you get your bachelor's in psychology, right? So because you thought you were going to go and maybe do human services work or some other type of work. You looked for work, couldn't find any work, found that you needed a master's degree to be, to be competitive in the market, so then you apply for a master's in counseling, right? So as long as, as, long as you can show that you were unable to obtain employment through, um, with your bachelor's degree, and even if you did, if you, if you are looking to obtain um, a, higher, a higher level position within an organization or for yourself, Right, and that position requires a master's degree, right? So for example, in order to be a college counselor, you've got to have a degree, a master's degree in, a, in the counseling field or a related field, right? And so it's really going to take a conversation with the Department of Rehabilitation. And what I always tell students is don't take no for an answer, apply, right? Submit your documentation, have the conversation with your counselor, if they tell you no, there's always an appeals process. If you need help figuring that out or figuring out where your goals are, give us a call and we can, we can walk you through that process. But um, the Department of Rehab has paid and I've seen them pay for um, degrees for, for doctorates, for PhDs, for law school, and even for medical school. So don't think that the bachelor's is the end all be all for the Department of Rehabilitation and funding your education. Great, thanks Carmen. Um, I wanted to bring up this question that someone asked, which is really important. Um, Carmen, I think you'd be able to speak to this as well, is how can accommodations help students who have or have had COVID-19? Mm. So that's a great question. So for students who have COVID-19, if you, if you find yourself in the middle of the semester, you come down with COVID-19, you've got to go to the, you've, you know, you've got to make that report to the university. And if you go to, one of the links that we posted, Kaylin, I believe in the beginning, or it's on the, it's on our slide list. There is a student portal where you would report that it would get sent to the health center. And then they'll send out a notice saying that you're going to be out for two weeks, three weeks, whatever that is. I believe it's, I believe it's 14 days, right? For your quarantine um, to end, et cetera. Um, I'm going to encourage you as long, as soon as you know, you've COVID-19 to let us know, right? So if you cannot attend your classes, if you need a note taker for your classes, if you're going to require any kind of an accommodation, and again, that's going to be based on an individual, on an individual need, right? Because COVID affects people differently. We've had, um, we know of, of, of people with COVID who have had very light symptoms, and then we know of people who have had very serious symptoms, right? So it's on an individual basis. We will engage you in an interactive process, and we will figure out what those accommodations might look like. So again, they could look like extended time on assignments, um, a, a, without point penalty, perhaps flexible attendance without point penalty. You might need a note taker or Otter AI to help you know um, for your classes when you attend. So it just it just really depends if you've had COVID nineteen, right? So we currently we don't know what all of the effects are on people who have had COVID nineteen. What we do know is that there have been effects on the internal organs and on just on, on different functions of, of, um, of our bodies, right, of our systems. So if you've had COVID-19 and you are maybe not feeling 100%, um, you, should, you should call us, schedule an appointment, let's talk about that and let's figure out if there are some accommodations that can help you um, do better in your classes and access your classes. For example, let's say you're still feeling really tired right? And you're having a hard time waking up in the mornings, right? Um, we could perhaps do an accommodation where you join your classes late and you don't get taken off points or 
perhaps you need flexible attendance because you've got to go see your doctor, right? Or you've got to do some follow-ups or, you know, whatever it may be. Perhaps you're still taking medication and there's some side effects to that medication. Again, it just really depends on the individual, on the individual need and, and on what's happening particularly with you in that situation. Thanks, Carmen. Sure. All right, um, next uh, we're actually going to uh, get to another poll, another poll question uh, that we have for you. It's gonna be about student engagement. So we're asking, which of the following would increase your sense of belonging at APU? So we have more social media posts, workshops and webinars, virtual group meets or games, or uh, video stories of personal experiences shared by students and staff. So we're wanting to try any ways to engage with students um, and we really value uh, your feedback on this. Uh, during remote learning, we know that student engagement is vital and we want you all to feel a sense of community. Nice, all right, so it looks like virtual group meets or games. Oh, great. And uh, video stories of personal experiences shared by students and staff. Okay, this is good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us, guys. Yeah. Um, so we have um, just a few last questions that students have answered here. Again, if you still have a question, you can still put it in that Q&A box. Um, so Anna, I'll pass this question to you. Um, the question is, is it possible to get leniency accommodations for classes and chapel attendance if we can't always attend because of appointments? Great question. Um, obviously, as we mentioned many times, um, accommodations are all individualized. So it is dependent on what uh, the student and their needs and their disability. Um, so I would encourage you, if this is something that you're interested in receiving, to start the process of submitting an application. Um, I know that an email has been sent out in regards to chapel this semester, um, and they are offering uh, online asynchronous for fall 2020 students. Um, and if you have any questions in regards to that, you could definitely um, contact our spiritual life team. There's a, um, they're going to be offering chapels at different times. Um, and they're going to be available online. So we are, we know as a university that we are trying our best to be flexible and uh, be supportive and um, make those make those accessible for you as well. Um, in regards to classes, um, definitely, that's definitely an accommodation. So I would definitely um, encourage you to reach out to our office. Um, you can also, in the survey that we're going to send out today, if you want us to reach out to you, you can let us know in that survey and give us your email, and one of us will reach out to you. Thanks, Anna. Yeah. Um, one question we had was, are appointments with the Writing Center also going to be online? That is correct. There will be online Writing Center appointments um, with writing coaches. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the chat a link to their website that you can click on to get more information about making an appointment with a writing coach. That's a great question. And they also have a speaking center. Uh, so they also have coaches that will help if you have to uh, give a presentation and they'll give you some pointers on how to, how to do that. I also wanna just remind our participants that you cannot copy and paste um, links from the chat box. So please click into any link that, um, that you're interested in or that you want to learn, something you want to learn more about and bookmark it, okay? So you still have some time. We've got about, maybe about 10 minutes left. So I encourage you to scroll through that, through that chat and bookmark those links. Great. Um, we had another question about receiving benefits from the Department of Rehab. Um, Anna, do you mind just putting that link in the chat again? Sure. Department of Rehab. It's a great resource for students. And you can get all your information there. And then our last question that we have in the Q&A um, box says, are our teachers going to contact us anytime soon to introduce us to how our online courses will proceed? Or are we going to be first introduced to them in August or on August 31st, the first day of classes? So I can answer that, um, Kaylin. 
Um, so right now, our, you know, our university and our instructors and our staff are really working hard to prepare for the new semester, right? For our students who are online and our students who are on the ground. So I'm gonna encourage you to keep checking your Canvas site and your syllabi, you know, all of your stuff will appear, will magically appear, my sense is before classes start. Um, and if it doesn't, it's just kind of like when during the regular school year, some instructors don't post their syllabi until that first week of classes, right? Don't let you know what books they need you're going to need um, during that first week of classes, but just keep checking that. Um, they're really busy making sure that, that they're able to provide you the best quality education in an online platform, right, through remote learning. Um, so we just ask that you be patient um, and that you give them some grace and that you, you, you just give them some time to do what they need to do because they're, they're really concerned about making sure that you get what you need and that your education is, is, that is one of quality during these times. Great, thanks Carmen. We had another question come up. Um, I have accommodations, but I'm not sure what resources are available for me. How can I find out more information? So. We had a question similar to that a little bit earlier. We do have our ADR resource guide site, which we will put the link in there. Patty, do you have- Yeah, I can go ahead and do that, yeah. So we have a link for our resource guide site, which is pretty much a 101 about what our office does and our resources. And then there's also um, a resource site from the Department of Education um that can really give a good overview of what types of, of accommodations there are so we'll also put that in the chat as well i'll go ahead and put that. so um Kaylin, i really want to encourage students to look at that google site we've worked really hard to make sure that it's comprehensive that it covers testing assistive technology note takers captioners scribes almost everything we could think of. Um, it's not an exhaustive list, so you should know that. If there's something on there, um, if there's not something on there that you need, let us know because we will, we will help figure out um, how we can provide um, access and the service to you. And I just also wanna let you know, we've also, we're in the process of finishing up a guide for faculty. Um, so we were also working really hard to ensure that faculty knows and understands how to provide you and how to implement accommodations within the online platform. Um, so we've been kind of working on all ends um, to make sure that your needs are met. So please take a look at that. Great, thanks. And then last question was just about um, the application, the request for accommodations application. Um, again, that will be in our ADR student resource guide site. So remember, you can't copy and paste the link. So click on that link. Patty just put it in the chat. Um, if you go there, you can find all the information of how to apply for accommodations and what resources we have. And right now, it doesn't look like we have anything in the Q&A. Okay. So I'll pass it to you, Anna. Great. Thanks, Kaylin. Great questions today. We actually have one more poll question. We wanted to also keep it um, light and fun. I know that we are all kind of on the same boat. So the question is, what's the first fun thing that you're going to plan to do after COVID? You want to start us off, Carmen? Yeah, so I think, <laughs> I think kind of one of the things I miss is the interaction with people. So I feel like I just want to hug everybody I see. <laughs> Or, you know, or people that I kind of know fairly well, like my colleagues and my, you know, my coworkers, my staff and, and students. I just, um, yeah, I just want to hug people and, 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 you know, welcome us back to, to what might be a semblance of normalcy. Yeah, I, well, I would say I would fall in the middle of two. I want to go and eat with my friends. So <laughs> socialize and eat. So if I can have both of those things, I think I'll be a happy person. Kaylin, what about you? Yeah, I think for me, I definitely want to take a vacation. I was supposed to go to Chicago later this summer and had to cancel that. So when COVID's all good and done, hopefully soon, um, I would love to go to Chicago and travel a little bit more. What about um. you? 
For me, well, luckily I took uh, a trip to North Carolina right before all the stay at home started happening. So I just lucked out. So I didn't have to cancel anything, which was great. But um, honestly, I'd probably look forward to going to Disneyland because I love Disneyland and I had a pass and it was just, I loved going with my daughter. So it was just kind of a fun time. Looks like we have our results here. Most people are yeah. hugging their friends. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then going to Disneyland, taking a vacation. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. That's cool. All right. So we don't do we don't have any more questions, Kaylin? No. Nope. We need to wrap this up. All right. So I just really want to thank everybody. Um, for participating. Kaylin's going to put up a slide with our contact information. Um, we're also going to send you a link to a recording. I don't know if it's going to, it might be YouTube or in some form. Um, and we're also going to send you some additional resources. Or Patty, I think you're plugging in some additional resources. Yeah, I just did right now. So there's three additional resources um, that are very important. Um, we'd like for you to, to take a look at those and please bookmark them. Destination APU Everything you need to know about APU this semester, you will find it there. The National Center for Colleges and Students with Disabilities, or what's better known as NCCSD. They've got some really great information for students with disabilities. Please take a look at that. And the American Psychology Association and COVID-19 information. We all acknowledge and know that COVID-19 has also impacted the mental health of Americans and of students um, during this extraordinary time. So please take a look at those. Um, again, we wanna thank you. We will be sending a post webinar survey for you to fill out and send back. We really encourage you to take the time to fill it out. It'll take you maybe about a minute and a half or so. Um, it'll help us help you better. And we really appreciate your time and we appreciate that you joined us here today. We're looking forward to seeing you some more in the coming semester. Um, we're looking forward to doing some more training, some more webinars and really engaging with you um, in the fall 2020. So thanks a lot um, and we will see you soon. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you.